Sairam, Wanakam, Namaskar, Vandanam, Assalamu Alaikum, and Satriya Kal. Today, we examine something very interesting, and I suppose something that everyone experiences in, at some point in their life, uh, the regularity of which differs from person to person and you know, whatever surrounding circumstances they may face. That word is called anger, anger, krodha, you know. I always say, you know, the six or well, the eight definitive sins of man, karma, krodha, loba, moha, mula, mara, mara, matira, hamkara, like that. Anger is a key one, right? Anger is a mood, is an emotion that destroys our conscience and closes all doors of victory, even when there are signs of victory. Anger not only opens the door to defeat, but it becomes a major rift, you know, major cause of rifts in relationships and different levels and different types, you know, despite a million goodness that a person may have. Right? The anger quality withers all the other good qualities, you know, overshadows it, overpowers it, you know. So Cambridge Dictionary says it's a strong feeling of being upset or annoyed because of something said, something done or something felt, you know, something wrong, something bad. The feeling that makes someone want to hurt another person, either by way of shouting or saying things or, you know, doing things, right? that is anger. But did you know from a, from a psychological perspective, right, there are three types of anger, actually. You know, there's the passive anger, that is open anger and that is assertive anger so passive anger open anger and assertive anger three types right and if you look at the psychological definition of anger that's a bit different it's they say anger is an emotion that is characterized by antagonism towards someone or something that you feel has deliberately done you wrong of course you don't process that first the moment you you experience that you think oh my God, how could he have done it? How could he have said it? You know, how could she have done this? But you don't process it. So that's why anger comes before the processing of information, you know, the discrimination. Anger is the absence of discrimination. You know, discrimination is viveka, you know, the, the fine tuning of events that make you think, maybe it is not what I thought. Uh, that is discrimination, you know? So... Uh, that is anger, you know. For example, right, you know, after the the Mahabharata war, right, uh, of course, all the Kauravas were defeated and the Pandavas were going back to Hastinapur. And they were obviously, you know, the tradition is that they are received by the king and queen of the country. So Dhridashtra, the king, he was there. Dhridashtra was there. And of course, his wife, Gandhari, was there. Of course, they were not very happy. They were very angry. But, uh, you know, at having lost all the hundred sons uh, and they were fuming and Vivashra had resolved within himself that when the, you know, Pandavas come and his anger was particularly directed at Bhima, right? Bhima, because Bhima is the one who defeated, you know, at the end of the day, Duryodhana, right? Um, and he thought when, when I hug him and, you know, Vivashra was, was, was a powerful king, was quite strong and well-built and he was also, you know, uh, a good warrior. So he said, just hug him so tight and I will crush his bones. Right? Of course, Lord Sri Krishna was also with them. So when they went to the palace uh, and everybody was hugging everybody else, when it came to B, when it came to Bhima's turn to hug the Dashtra, you know, Krishna pushed a statue. So Bhima was wondering why. Of course, Gandhari doesn't know what's happened because, you know, she's got her eyes um, Closed, you know, she always ties up the partially covered eyes, right? So she can't see. The Dhrashtra, of course, is blind by, by nature. So he doesn't know. But when he felt this, uh, you know, this big thing in front of him, he hugged it. And, you know, with gritting teeth, he hugged it with so much of strength that the statue broke. It was a bronze metallic statue, right? But it broke because of that much of anger within, you know, uh, himself and of course everybody was surprised that's one example of how anger can make you do things that you would not ordinarily do 
Uh, another thing is uh, when, um, you know, going back, you know, if you rewind Mahabharata a little earlier to the point where, you know, the, the, the Pandava princes and all the Kaurava princes went to the Gurukul of, you know, Guru Dronacharya. And of course, he was teaching them all the arts uh, of warfare and of, you know, personal grooming and all those kind of things. And he was giving them uh, assignments, right? Uh, on such one such occasions, he was telling them ten principles that you know, he was enunciating ten principles that he wanted uh, all the students to learn. The next day, um, he decided to test their knowledge on what they had learned. So he called uh, everybody to come, um, and he he asked uh, Yudhishthira, you know, the eldest of the Pandavas. So Yudhishthira, tell me what I taught you yesterday. Tell me the ten principles. And uh, Yudhishthira said, um, he said, he has learned the first principle, but he has not mastered the second one yet, so he cannot go beyond that. And Dronacharya was very angry. He said, uh, you know, I expected you to do more than this. You, of all, come and tell me that you've only mastered the first principle and you haven't mastered the second principle. You know what is wrong with you and then he you know he took off he took a wig a whip and he started thrashing him um and and yudhishthira was just standing there taking the beating right and dronacharya suddenly realized that something may be wrong here because this guy is not flinching you know he's just standing there and taking everything that i'm giving him so he stopped and he pondered for a while he paused for a while and then he asked what is the first principle that I taught you? And Yudhishthira said, Truth, Satyam. I have mastered that. What is the second one? He said, the second one, Guru, what you said is to control one's temper. And that is why I said, I hadn't mastered it yet. So I cannot go on to the third one. My God, at that point in time, Dronacharya realized his folly and his sense of anger and he asked for forgiveness and he said, this is an example of how you control the mind, you know. So the Guru embraced, you know, Dronacharya embraced uh, Yudhishthira and complimented him sincerely. He says, I can tell you that you have now mastered the second principle and, uh, you know, you can move on to the rest, you know. So that is one of the things that... Uh, uh, I thought it was poignant enough for me to bring out, you know. He said, uh, speak when you are angry and you'll make the best speech <laughs> you'll ever regret. You know, who said that? Shakespeare said that. Speak when you're angry and you'll make the best speech you'll ever regret. And uh, Buddha said, try to manage your anger. Try to manage your anger since people cannot manage their stupidity. How profound is that? Try to manage your anger because people cannot manage their stupidity. You know, if you're patient, this is an old Chinese proverb, right? Confucius said it a couple of times. If you are patient in one moment of anger, you will escape a hundred days of sorrow. If you are patient in one moment of anger, you will escape a hundred days of sorrow. So many people have said so many things. Gandhi said, Anger and intolerance are the enemies of correct understanding. Anger and intolerance are the enemies of correct understanding. Mm -hmm. Samyak Chintanam, as Buddha says, right? It's the ultimate destroyer of your own peace of mind, Dalai Lama said. Anger is the ultimate destroyer of your own peace of mind. And Swami said, wherever there is a pain, it is caused by anger. Wherever there is anger, there is always pain underneath. Till I see you next time, stay blessed. Bye-bye.